Cameroon joins the international community to celebrate the International Day of the Girl Child. On the theme, Girl, Falls Unscripted and Unstoppable, a forum which spotlight girls as powerful agents of change. Cameroon joins the international community to celebrate the International Day of the Girl Child on the theme, Girl Falls Unscripted and Unstoppable, a forum which spotlight girls as powerful agents of change. The indomitable lands of Cameroon will clash against the Carthage Eagles of Tunisia. In a friendly tomorrow, the encounter in Tunis is the fastest of the new technical staff. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 7.30 News. The International Day of the Girl Child has been celebrated with emphasis laid on upholding equal rights for girls and highlighting their influence in communities. Celebrated on the theme, Girl Force Unscripted and Unstoppable. In the far north region, young girls and women have been breaking barriers and stereotypes to become entrepreneurs and innovators. This has been through the influence of non-governmental organizations who fight against gender inequality and all forms of discrimination. Young girls Girls in the region, however, echo the need to address certain cultural practices that hamper their developments. Joseph Ayankaina tells us more. The girl child of the Fan of region faces enormous challenges, which are most often tantamount to their socio-cultural, educational and economic progress. In the name of culture and tradition, they are forced into early marriages and sometimes given less value compared to boys. The discrimination between girls and boys, and you find sometimes uh, people don't follow up the education of girls. They leave them in the in any ways, and they give authority for boys. Though still existing, gender-based discrimination and violence in the far north region have been mitigated thanks to efforts of the government and some non-governmental organizations operating in the region. A cross-cutting uh, activity for all our projects is uh, education of children and especially education of girls. At least baccalaureate before leaving school for girls. We make also advocacy advocacy to have a gender sensitive species in the school. For many, the battle against gender inequalities needs to be intensified so as to get the expected result that of given equal opportunities to boys and girls in the far north. In other news, Cameroon has successfully participated in the Sith Replenishment Conference of the Global Fund for the Fight Against HIV, Tuberculosis and Malaria in Lyon, France. The country, through its president, Paul Beer, pledged to contribute 3 billion CV friends to the fund in order to eradicate the pandemics. Details with Ashwin on special assignment. Just as on day one of the conference, President Paul Bia is present on this second and final day of deliberations of the Global Fund 6 Replenishment Conference, still with the First Lady Chantal Bia by his side, always with the same keen interest, listening to every detail and internally weighing his options. The overall intentions have not changed. Raise 14 billion US dollars that will be used to assist countries like Cameroon over the next three years in the eradication of the epidemics of AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. In this conference, the mobilization has been incredible. Donors have been quite generous. 14 billion US dollars was in the bag, two times the current budget of Cameroon, just the amount that was targeted. Cameroon contributed 3 billion francs CFA. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, who joined his African pairs on this final day, captured the urgency of the moment and the stakes involved when he said that the largesse of the donor community should not be considered as mere charity. It should rather be considered as a duty, an obligation that must decisively pull down the walls of inequality stigmatization and prejudice against victims of AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. President Macron specifically singled out Cameroon for praise as one of the countries that has got it right in the fight against these illnesses. The desire of France to help Cameroon build a more robust investment base for health 
Yet is a president Paul Beer, convinced of the power of his entreaties and satisfied with the potency of his corridor diplomacy, leaving the conference venue, having ensured that Cameroon was not only present but made a significant contribution to the outcome of the conference. And back to the country, more than 600 meters of cable have been stolen from CRTV installations in Bimbia, leaving the population of the southwest region void of CRTV radio and television signals. The robbery, which is occurring for the nth time, has been strongly condemned by officials of the technical department. Ombo Suzi Munjua tells us more. Insulating tubes were everywhere at the foot of the CRTV tower at Bimbia in Limbe, but the content all gone. According to technicians on the field, the content is made up of copper, which is what the thieves are after. We saw that three huge cables were stolen from the tower right down to the center, cut off. So our signals are no more there. Whether it's Man Kamur FM, CRTV National Station, or the television signal, are no more there. The loss is enormous. This is the eighth time that this um, theft event and vandalism is occurring in this centre. We have lost at least uh, 600 metres of cable. Not only CRTV that has suffered, our partners also have suffered enormously because orange installation was also dealt with, Sonara installations were also dealt with. So it's a huge loss actually, and in terms of money, it's worth hundreds of millions. The impact is also huge. No radio, no television signals in Limbe and its environs. As for now, CRTV, signal is off from Bimbia Transmission Center. We are not transmitting. We are not broadcasting. Nonetheless, measures have been taken to ensure that the population can once again be able to watch and listen to programs on the CRTV. Meantime, no the appointed officials of the Cameroon Radio Television Corporation have been challenged to work towards maintaining the corporation's position in the audiovisual landscape. The Director General of CRTV, Shandongo, commissioned the officials promoted to professional ranks and posts of responsibility today at the production center in Balatu, Yaoundé. Details of the colorful ceremony attended by special guests with our reporter, Raihanatu Sali. They range from directors to subdirectors, editorialists, senior reporters and service heads. Today they take up their responsibilities with enthusiasm and are ready to deliver the goods. I will be ready because my mind is settled and I think uh, the challenge is big, but I can carry it. Being a senior reporter is a big challenge. I'm ready to face it and especially because it means that I need to do more work is a big challenge to be an editorialist in CRTV. I am only praying God to give me the strength and the wisdom to take up this challenge. Cheers, excitement and the fireworks from the CRTV orchestra resounded in Studio One of the CRTV production house, which was at peak capacity. And all the celebration didn't stop CRTV's Director General from dishing out the instructions. The newly installed will have to work to maintain CRTV's position as leader in the audiovisual landscape. The future of CRTV is a big challenge for each and every one of us. Technological development, competition, development in uh, the practices of audiovisual consumption require a uh, deepening of the reforms initiated since 2016. Family, friends and colleagues were witnesses to this new chapter, which begins now. Elsewhere, 520 students and diplomacy interns have begun the 2019-2020 academic year at the International Relations Institute of Cameroon. Dr. Salomon Heath, during the official opening, and joined them to be assiduous and to be disciplined. As we hear in this report by Sidoni Jobmandi. 
a total of 520 fresh men of the International Relations Institute of Cameroon, Iraq, took part at the solemn matriculation ceremony. They were exhorted to make good use of the recommendations given by the authorities of the institute. We have started a new year. Uh, we have to start it with determination, with uh, a lot of principle for hard working, uh, to reach a certain success at the end of the year. During the event, Professor Yves Paul Manjen elaborated on the history of Africa and the changes in the international system. The main uh, argument of the speech is that uh, African independence can be heard like a configuration that make possible some dynamics in the international relation. The president of the student union, on his part, sees the opportunity to school the freshmen on how to better organize their studies for future success. They need to be present on campus, they need to take their studies seriously, they need to know that they are here to study and uh, they can only succeed when they are present here in Iraq. Staying away from lectures, it's not going to help them in any way. The ceremony ended with a call on the student to keep the flag of Iraq flying higher and create an enabling environment for Cameroonian and African youths. In diplomacy, the state of relations between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Republic of Cameroon has come under review. The Saudi ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Abdelilah Mohamed, was received in audience by the minister delegate at the Ministry of External Relations in charge of relations with the Islamic world, Adam Gagum. Both officials sought ways of strengthening ties in the domains of culture and economy. They also lauded the relations that have impacted the increase in investments in the country. A running series on Japan will take you on a discovery to the Nagoya Castle. It is one of the most visited sites in Japan, which is a symbol of imperial leadership. The castle covers a surface area of more than 3,000 meters, and it is a depiction of a first-class palace architecture. Our chief international correspondent, Charles Abone, is back from Japan with details of the 400-year-old palace. Of the 30 million tourists in Japan each year, about 6 million come here at the plus four centuries old samurai Homaru architectural jewel, the Nagoya Castle. It was uh, uh, built 400 years ago uh, by Ieyasu Tokugawa. This is just one of the many touristic sites that make Nagoya the fourth most populated city in Japan, an area of great touristic adventure. An Edo era construct of Imperial Japan, the Nagoya Castle is the first recognized national treasure. The layout is a perfect testimony of ancient Japanese architectural ingenuity, combining excellence in castle palace and craftsmanship. Ieyasu Tokugawa, the relative, close relative, uh, stayed here. And uh, uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu is the first uh, leader who ruled over Japan. It shows you that in the 1600s, they were not only real architects, but they were, uh, they, they were real carpenters. The, 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 the linings, um, how the gold was used to have some of the ceilings. To enter this 3,100 meters surfaced palace with 24 mats and five key rooms, you remove your shoes, forbidden to smoke in this totally lit building, depicting Japanese symbols of authority as illustrated here. Uh, people had a, a, a thinking of 3D already in the, in the 1600s, and this is nothing new. New, really. The exterior and interior is a construct of granite stone, earthwork and wood, surrounded by trees and stones, which served as protection against invaders in the old times of a troubled Japanese history. It's very fascinating to see how the Japanese go about preserving their own legacy and history. Today, the reconstructed palace, following World War II destruction, makes Nagoya Castle to remain one of the imposing structures of the tiger of Asia, Japan.
Our special page, the presidential order to discontinue proceedings pending before military tribunals for 333 persons arrested in connection with the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions continue to make news. The move has been applauded in Ganha subdivision in the Adamawa region alongside the release of 102 officials and members of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement. Celeste Sumbele reports. The president's gesture ordering the discontinuance of some 333 proceedings that were pending at the military tribunal against some individuals arrested in connection to the Anglophone crisis and members as well as officials of the CRM still echoes in some villages of the Adamawa region. The people of Nganga subdivision are overwhelmed with the head of state's initiative in his concession of restoring peace in the northwest and southwest regions and the nation at large. The traditional chief of Nganga, Belaka Saubum, called on his notables to support the head of state in his fight for peace by avoiding provocative words and actions that may anger the population. The traditional leader has expressed the hope that recommendations taken by the Decentralization Commission shall be strictly implemented for an effective decentralization that will enable his community and others to have good roads hospitals, portable water, and other social amenities. The West region internally displaced persons forced to flee the upheavals in the northwest and southwest regions are optimistic that the special status for the two regions will end the crisis. They are also hopeful that measures to reconstruct the destroyed infrastructure and the resumption of development projects will be implemented in the days ahead. Hanan Jong reports. What to eat, where to sleep, and a school for their children. These are the issues that preoccupy these families, which have abandoned everything to barely survive in very tough conditions in some of the suburbs of Bafusan. If they see that the special status will be the one that will make the northwest and southwest to feel at, at ease, it will make us to go back to our various uh, houses. But for others who are keen on what is happening in relation to the crisis, the special status proposal is their last hope. We are very happy about the special status given to us, Northwesterners and Southwesterners. But we just hope that to, it should really be something that will work. Both women can't wait to go back to their homes, jobs, families, and businesses. In other news, the commander of the 501 Air Base, Lieutenant Colonel Hamza Ibrahim, and the regional head of ex service men and war victims, Navy Captain Samba Samuel Lawazi, have taken office. They were installed by the Secretary of State in charge of ex service men and war victims, Kumpa Isa. Winston Lebge reports on the ceremony in Bamenda. These are the new men who have been installed in Bamenda by the Secretary of State in charge of ex service men and war victims. To the left, Lieutenant Colonel Hamza Ibrahim, commander of the 501 Air Base. And to the right, Navy Captain Samba Samuel Awazi, the regional head for ex-servicemen and war victims. You have been placed on assignment <coughs> under the governor of the region. And on that score, you are his technical advisor and English and issues that fall within your area of competence. Lieutenant Colonel Hamza Ibrahim has been reminded of his prerogatives, which include ensuring the security of the 501 air base at all times and in all circumstances. To Navy Captain Samba Samuel Awazi, the instructions are clear concerning liaising with the host regions where many ex servicemen from the Northwest are seeking refuge from the crisis so that they can continue to be monitored and supervised. What we do is we usually have them to help us in giving us intelligence to help the those in activity to see how they can put order in the society. Secretary of State Kumpa Isa insists that the Northwest Secretariat does well to manage, educate and guide orphans, widows, as well as other civil and military war victims. 
The promotion and development of the handicraft sector in Cameroon has been at the center of discussions between the Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises and the Senegalese Ambassador to Cameroon. During an audience, Minister Ashil Basilikan III and His Excellency Kari Duve identified areas where handicraft and social economy can be improved in both countries. Aspects related to exchange training programs and modeling and the use of textile were equally on the spotlights. And away from that audience, now on to our running series on the Douala Bonaberry seaports. We zoom in on the fate of the workers of the container terminal. With the concession contract of the employee expected to end on December 31 this year, the over 500 level force is uncertain about their integration by the new employer. Alphonse Abongwa reports that the workers are expectant and they hope to keep their privileges. It is a typical working day at the container terminal of the Douala Bonaberry seaport. All the staff are on duty but uncertainty looms in their minds as the December 31 deadline for the end of their employer's contract draws nearer. We are worried of many things. One, we wish to know to our authority whether the newcomers, the those who are coming in, are they going to take us? with all the advantages that we were having here in DIT. That is one of our worries. And we are also worried whether are they going to recruit all of us to work with them. Those are our worries. So we are calling on our authority to really look into our worries. While anticipating the new era in doubt, the workers wish for their privileges to be given consideration by the incoming. We have transportation. Advantages like at the end of the year, there's always a basket of commodities for workers. There is a canteen for workers, and there is a, which is free. There, there is a insurance, supplementary insurance for workers. There is a, this uh, national social insurance for workers. So those are advantages. There are many advantages, and those are advantages that we are worried. Whether are they going to take us with all those advantages? At the Port Authority of Douala, the structure charged with managing the transitional process, the subject matter is still treated with tact. In the meantime, Article 42 of Cameroon's Labour Code has been highlighted by the workers as a legal basis for their plight. Discussions continue between the stakeholders and the Ministry of Labour and Social Security in Yaoundé. Two banking institutions, Société Camerounaise de Bank and La Régionale, have been elected as representatives of legal entities of holders of the country's bonds. The security bonds are to raise funds to finance major development projects such as the Lompanga Hydroelectric Dam and the Kribi Deep Seaport. As we hear in this report by Luma Slim Davis. Investors of the government bond ECMR 5.60% net 2018-2023 grouped into a body of bondholders endowed with legal personality to defend their interests. An election according to the categories of legal entities and natural persons was organized. I will work because I know the work. The work is to check every month and uh, to check the repayment of investment. I am there to f make sure that every year the installment that is to be paid is paid. So I'll make sure that every time I'll go and check around the bank to see that the interest had be, and you pay and the only the, the installment are, are, are as well and communicate. In order to secure repayment of this loan, the issuer set up in collaboration with the Bank of Central African States a security mechanism in form of a special reserve account at the BIAC headquarters. Eventually, they are going to be uh, the constituent body that will monitor, supervise, control, and evaluate the reimbursement of uh, the resources that the state has borrowed for the next five years. Bondholders and their representatives cease to exist after integral payment of the loan by the state of Cameroon. And out of Cameroon, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has been awarded this year's Nobel Peace Prize. He's been hailed for efforts to promote peace and international cooperation. The award was made public today in Oslo, Norway, where the Nobel Peace Prize Committee is based. Charles Ebune has the details. Just less than two years in office, the Ethiopian Prime Minister has brought to an end a 20-year-old conflict between Eritrea and Ethiopia. 
just less than two years in office, the Ethiopian prime minister has helped brought civilian rule to Sudan after the military took over. And just less than two years in office, the Ethiopian prime minister has helped stabilize the Romo region ridden by conflict in his own country. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2019 to Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali. We are ready to settle our differences through discussion. The 43-year-old Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed was named the winner of this year's Nobel Peace Prize from a list of 301 candidates nominated, comprising 223 individuals and 78 organizations worldwide. Thank you. The reform-minded Ethiopian Prime Minister now joins the list of a few other African sons and daughters to win this coveted peace prize. Amongst other Africans in this group is late Kofi Atanan and legendary Nelson Mandela. In culture, this weekend promises to be a fun-filled one with artists like Andre Manga, Sengila, and Loko, expected to three fans in concerts in towns of Yaoundé and Douala. Most Tiglu Charismatic will also be in the company of other Cameroonian humorists to provide fun and laughter. Alice Mbey has details of these and more in our entertainment segment. Andre Manga, a guitarist and animator, will entertain his fans this weekend at the French Institute in Douala. He will stand the stage with several albums, especially the hit Voyage. Still in Douala this Saturday, Singular and Loco will drill fans with their famous hits in a concert. Don't miss the show. Take a rendezvous at 6 p.m. at Canal Olympia Bisenge. Humor is also on spotlight this Saturday at Les Hommes d'Honneur de Konegi in Yaoundé. Mustiglo Charismatic will be in the company of other artists. Take the appointment at 7 p.m. Vraiment, excuse me, il faut continuer ton travail. Dans la vie, tout que tu fais, fais ça bien. Si tu as choisi que tu es un voleur, vole quand la vente populaire t'arrête, tu vas dire Amen. The weekend has a lot of stuff for you in the nation's capital. Go out and have fun. Dans ma maison. Dans ma maison. Ah, oh, tu veux... And on to this advertorial, the second Carrefour market in Cameroon has been inaugurated by the Minister of Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Industries, Dr. Tiger. The market, situated in a key in the center region, is expected to boost the consumption of supply chain of Cameroonian products. She Zita Kema tells us more. Under the chairmanship of the Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, represented at the event by the Minister of Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Industries, Dr. Tiger, the inaugural ceremony to launch the Carrefour Market at the Eke District here in Yaoundé by Sifao Retail Company in partnership with the Cameroon government has gone on the way. The ceremony applauded the effective participation of private and public stakeholders within and across Cameroon. It comes two years after opening the first Carrefour market in Douala. It is described as a milestone which is a real source of pride and investment for both the Sefa retail company from France and the Cameroon government. We have a large range of products and uh, the second uh, particularity is uh, the we promote all the products that are made in Cameroon. Adding more weight and color to the event, the staff of CRTV on the FM 94 electrified the atmosphere while comedians, traditional dance and singing groups showcased their savoir-faire, depicting Cameroon's rich cultural diversity, not leaving out the curtain of the boundary line. However, the supermarket has been divided into several services like the bakery, Ketri, household, textile services, and more for the easy access of customers. The ceremony ended on a satisfactory note while Sefawo Retail Company stressed on the fact that more than 35% of their revenue must come from agriculture, animal husbandry, small and medium-sized businesses, and industries in Cameroon. 
In sports, the indomitable lands of Cameroon resume with competitive football tomorrow in Tunis with an international friendly against the Carthage Eagles of Tunisia. Both teams are meeting for the first time after their disastrous performance at the 2019 African Cup of Nations in Egypt. For Cameroon, the match will be the first test for its new technical staff. Gideon Tazo tells us more. Tons of expectations now weigh heavily on the shoulders of new Indomitable Lions head coach, Portuguese national Antonio Conceição, as his team resumes with competitive football action against Tunisia this Saturday in Rades, Tunis. The fans of the Indomitable Lions are demanding. Uh, they want nothing short of victory. I think uh, the expectations are not too high. Three months after the Lions surrendered the Afghan Trophy in Egypt at the eighth final, there is eagerness to see whether something has changed, most especially now that a new coaching staff is in charge. Call it time for the Conceição method. The Conceição touch might not emerge so much uh, as soon as uh, the game against Tunisia. Uh, but obviously we are going to see glimpses uh, of what the squad under Conchichao is going to look like. But the truth be told, the desire among pundits and fans is to see how the new manager stamps his authority and style in the den. Our team has to defend its style to which they gave away in Egypt in 2021. Uh, the expectations should be high. And uh, I think those who are given that opportunity uh, to take uh, control of their, their national team should be conscious of that. Lodged in Group F of the 2021 Afghan qualifiers, Cameroon will kick off their campaign against Cape Verde in Yaoundé on November 11. A week later, they will travel to Kigali to challenge the Amavobis of Rwanda. Still in sports, the new head coach of Cameroon's Intermediate Lions, Yves Clemar Hoga, has been urged to put in place a solid team that will win the 2020 African Nations Championship. The call was made today by the Minister of Sports and Physical Education, Professor Narcis Mwelekombi, while commissioning him and the other technical staff into office. Baldwin Sam has the details. By appending their respective signatures on these documents, it officially kickstarts an era for the intermediate slams of Cameroon with their new head coach, Yves Clement Aroga. During Friday's brief installation ceremony, Sports and Physical Education Minister Professor Narcisse Mwele Kombi called on the new coach of the Intermediate Lions to select only the best home-based players, putting quality first. He was called upon to ensure that a solid team is put in place to help Cameroon win the 2020 African Nations Championship at home for the first time. The whole Cameroonian are waiting for us not to participate because the competition is here in Cameroon. We have to win the trophy and to give satisfaction to all the Cameroonians waiting for us for that opportunity. A constant follow-up of our local football championship and the detection of players from the base should equally be his watchword. If Clement Aroga, age 50, is a certified UEFA pro football coach who has coached many youth football teams in Spain and France and will be assisted by Emmanuel Ndumbe Bosso as deputy. And that brings us to the end of the 7.30 news in which you heard that Cameroon has joined the international community to today to celebrate the International Day of the Girl Child on the theme Girl Falls, Unscripted and Unstoppable. At 8.30 p.m., you'll be in the company of Karina Olivia Beat. Our programs continue on the CRTV. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Have a beautiful weekend. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. God willing. Good night.